watched my ride along video about the Ohio to Erie Trail. I did this about a year ago to date, and I've been really happy to see all the interest in this trail. It's really a great adventure, and it's worthy of your time and travel to experience it. I'm actually considering doing it again sometime soon. I'm not sure when I mentioned that because I enjoyed it enough to repeat it, so I think that's a good sign. So I've decided to compile all of the answers to questions I've been asked into one quick informational video. The trail is 326 miles, and it's a great mix of rail trails, towpath, paved, unpaved, city, country, hills, flat. It's really got it all. According to the most reliable websites, it's about 85% off-road and 15% on-road. People ask my preference to go it alone or with others, and while I love to ride alone and it's peaceful, it gives me a time to think about life, uh, there's other times, especially when riding with a good friend, that just makes a world of difference. There's some people out there that just make for great touring partners, and my buddy Carl is one of those guys. We've done a lot of miles together. He's an adventurer. He rarely complains. When times get tough, he just puts his head down and he gets the job done. Most often with a smile on his face. He's a good man. Although I currently live in the first state of Delaware, I'm originally from Cincinnati and all the things that that brings. So our choice to ride north to south was just based on this. Riding home felt more natural. From other YouTube videos, it seems like a mix. If you go southward, you get the hills out of the way. If you go northward, you finish with more climbs. Some people have said that there's more wind that comes from the southwest. I don't know. Overall, I really don't think it makes much difference which way you choose. So to break down the trail into some segments, and again, I'm going to go north to south here, I think there's seven distinct parts to this trail. The first part I would call Escape from Cleveland. You have to look closely at a map. To me, this was the most confusing part. There's a lot of urban bike paths in Cleveland, so just because you're on a trail doesn't mean you're on the right one. Again, get a map and follow it. The second part is the Ohio Erie Canal or Cuyahoga State Park area. It's smooth, packed canal towpath with beautiful little towns, very relaxing. If you're into towpaths, this is one of the finest. Then we get into the rolling hills and roads of Northeast Ohio. The trail's absolutely pretty much flat otherwise, but this is beautiful countryside, but the rolling hills can be a test, so you need to be prepared. Save some energy, don't hit this section with tired legs. Then we get into the Columbus Maze. Again, follow the maps. Followed by the straight, long rail trail. Honestly, this was a little bit boring. It's just long, long, long sections through flat farmland. Uh, not a lot to see. Be aware that this area is a little bit more remote and finding accommodations was a little trickier than other areas. Then we get to the Little Miami River. A great trail, shaded and scenic. Lots of little towns to stop and explore. A lot of great breweries as well, which I'd recommend if you're into that sort of thing. One of my personal favorites, 50 West Brewery, which also has a great place to park if you want to do a day ride, if that fits your schedule. After that, it's the final push into whatever you want to call Cincinnati, the Queen City, Porkopolis, the home of WKRP. There's a little urban stretch into downtown nearby the stadiums and the riverfront. Now, I've been asked this question a lot. Where is the official start and end? If you're a purist, at Edgewater Park, there's the Cleveland sign. The trail shows itself just starting at the beach. If you go up the hill to the Cleveland sign, you can see on the map where that's at. In terms of downtown, Carl and I thought we would just call the paddle wheel the end of this trip, but his much smarter and more observant wife found an actual sign about a quarter mile east of there. Speaking of signage, this trail is really well marked throughout. But one note, you have to be mindful that some of the trails have multiple names. The Holmes County Trail, for example, is a beautiful section of the Otet. Some of the trails were around a long time before the Ohio to Erie Trail was finally connected. Uh, some people were just more forward-thinking, but I still found it a little confusing at times to see multiple names pulling out my map to make sure we were on course. Okay, the last question is about detours. In the northern section, there is a detour around Massillon that's going to last through 2022. You can bypass this through roads with no problem. 
In the southern section, there's been a series of repairs on the Little Miami Scenic Trail. You can check miamivalleytrails.org. But as of today, that's May 2022, there is a closure at Grandin Road right at the Cartridge Brewing site. That's supposed to last through the end of 2022. And please note, this is not a detour. This is a closure. It's not easy to get on or off at this point. So if you're traveling northward, you want to get off at Route 22 and take a left on Route 48. If you're heading southward, you're going to do the opposite. Heavy traffic, uh, very narrow burns. It's a really small distance, and I wouldn't let this scare you off from having a really great experience on the rest of the journey. One enhancement coming in 2023 is a section that will connect Newtown with Lunkin Airport, which will take cyclists off of really busy roads. I can't wait for this. In terms of websites for more info, there's really just one really fantastic place to go, ohiotoerietrail.org. They have interactive maps, they have downloadable GPS files, PDFs on amenities, lodging, campsites, bike shops. They also sell a trail guide in two versions, southbound and northbound, which is a really cool idea. By the way, I skipped covering accommodations on this because usually that's one of the hardest parts for me planning a trip. This website was really awesome. And just to remind you, if you want to see more of the trail online, you can click on the link to view a 4.5 hour ride along video. Um, it's divided up into each of six days so you can see individual segments if you prefer, but there's a lot of visual detail about what you will encounter on the trail. If I didn't cover your question, please comment below with any additional questions you may have. I'd really love to hear how your trip went if you decide to give it a try. And as always, if you like this channel, please subscribe because subscribers just make me happy. Hope you have a great day. Remember to get out there and enjoy this amazing blue marble we have the chance to explore.